Good morning everyone. I'm back. It's early and uh, because I got a lot of stuff to do today. Uh, first off, uh, the updated sponsor list. I forgot yesterday, but here it is. And this is updated from, let's see, this morning around 9 o'clock. And I want to thank everyone for making my channel possible. So thank you very much. Now, I have, um, I have been dinking around. As you can see, it's all dirty. But um, I was testing the paints. So um, what I want to do is a background then I want to let it dry and then as you can see you don't really see anything until the uh, the surface is really really saturated with paint as you can see the more you put on the more uh, visible it becomes But I just want to make one, um, in one color, a background. Let's put some more of that ox skull in there. Make it spread just a little more. When you're adding um, ox skull to the paint, just really do little tiny, tiny drops. And keep on uh, testing if it's um, spreading the way you want it to spread. And this is Payne's Gray. It's Vallejo paint. It's uh, just one color. There we go. Now I'll show you the difference. Oh no, I won't. I'll, first I'm going to take this off. Just a little bit more. Because I want one really... Um, just one color because I want to put veins on top and that's something I haven't showed you yet let's see let's take it off here let it soak up and as you can see now the paint is coming through just let it soak that paint up uh, the sides might curl up just a little bit but if you wait it'll go back down and then you know that it's totally saturated. And the best thing to do is um, you can use a stick or whatever. Just, you know, get under there and then pull it over the rim. That's the best thing to do, like this. And that's what we get. A really beautiful one colored background there's a little white in there but the white is where the uh where there was no paint but what i'm going for is this middle section it's just one color and i'm gonna put it away now we're going to let that dry and um then I'll come back later. I'm going to try to remove this tray. Let's see, put some pink on here. Then I'm going to uh, come back and uh, do veins over it when it's dry. But you do have to wait that it's totally dry. You might even have to iron out the paper. And then you can uh, focus on your veins. Now I'll show it. I'll show the veins what I was planning on doing. Oh yeah, and someone asked me to do uh, gold gold metallic so let's do that <coughs> gold 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 because they said you know the gold is just um a little bit lighter than the copper so here we have the gold then uh, just a little bit of water. Got to get a new brush. And just mix it up. Make it nice and smooth.
a little bit more. This is really light go oh sorry about that. I oh no, I don't have my microphone on there. So um it really does have to be uh, thin for it to work. And I'm going to put in the ox gall. And I might need a little bit more, you know, for it to float. You never know. But you can always um, test it out. Nope, this won't, won't spread as you can see. Just tiny little dots. That's when you know you have to put some more water in. Some more ox gall and mix it up again. Let's see what it does now. Still no spreading. And really every uh, paint that you're going to try, different brands, different colors, you'll have to be doing a little research. See, it just drops right through. That doesn't work. Now I'm going uh, to add the Kodak Photo Flow because that's just a little stronger than the uh, Oxgall. Let's see how this works. Uh, it's, this is spreading a little bit better. Now what you see is um, pure gold, light gold. But the thing is that what you want is when you're doing the double dip, you only want the veins because otherwise it'll just, you know, go straight over the, uh, the other colors and you won't see the background. So that's not something that you really want. So putting a little bit more on because it's going to be, um, when I do the veins, it's going to push all those colors together. The only thing that I don't like about this is that you got so many brushes. Every single, every single color has a different brush. And then you got the whole table filled with brushes. Okay, that's so starting to look really cool. Let's do a little bit more of the gold. Oops, see? And then after a while, you'll experience that it won't spread as much as uh, in the beginning, then you have to add a little bit more of that photo flow. See, now it's spreading again. Okay, that's enough of that gold. Now I'm gonna come back in with the pink. A little bit of uh, photo flow. Now there are already um, kind of beautiful veins, but if I lift this off, that is beautiful here. If I lift this off, it, it will put a pink layer over the background and you don't want that. So then you start doing something different. You get a clean cup and you fill it. I'm going to fill it with a uh, ox gall, about 10 drops, and then only water. As you can see, then I'm going to get a new brush. And really soak it up. And put it on. Oh, it's not even working. What's that? You know, um, another thing that I have noticed that you really, really do need to uh, make sure that your cups, your brushes, everything is not contaminated. So um, cleaning them all before you start is a good idea. There it goes. Just use the photo flow. Can you see how beautiful those veins are starting to look? And you can, um, you can somewhat control where those big veins are going to be. Okay, that's beautiful. I'm going to take this bit here. Now imagine that um, I, ha I have a paper where the background is on it, and then I just put this on. 
let it soak up. And you see it coming through the paper, that's good. But you should just give it, you know, a couple of seconds to really soak up that paint from the surface. Then I get my little thingy my bobby. There we go. Ah, don't do that, don't. There it is, see that? Now you have just the veins and you have a lot of white on the paper. And then the background will, will show through here, the big pieces, and those veins will be spread out over the, uh, over the background. And that's the technique, double dipping. Okay. We'll just let that dry. And now I am going to try and lift one more off because uh, I like how it's how it's moving, but I think I can make it a little bit better. A little bit more paint. And I'm gonna come in with some white, which is a little bit contaminated. Nope, it needs some flow. Oops, there it goes. Now, as you can see, the, the water is pretty dirty, but don't, don't bother about it because you're only going to um, get what's on the surface. That's the only thing that's going to get on, onto your paper. So all the dirt that's underneath, it won't uh, get in the paper. A little bit more, and I'm going to see if I can manipulate it in a bit. And maybe try a little bit more of the gold. Is this the gold one? Yes, it is. Ooh, no, it's not spreading. It doesn't want to spread. And then you just keep adding the photo flow or the uh, ox skull. See here, yeah, just a little bit of that gold on top. Okay, then back to the pink. I'm really loading it up right now. That's a lot of paint. Okay, <clears throat> now we need a little stick. course I have to watch out if there's no oh no there's not there's no uh, soap on it so I'm gonna be pulling it and the difference of this one um, uh, opposite the one I did yesterday is that because I have the um, the wallpaper glue in it it will keep the pattern much 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 better and if you want to manipulate your paint then like this, you know, with, with a stick or with a comb, then you really want to go for some thickened size. And we all know what the paint is <coughs> floating on. <coughs> we call that size. So um, there we go. That's kind of a nice pattern, isn't it? I like that. And you can manipulate it as long as you like. It's no problem at all. And I've even seen uh, people uh, do it on much thicker uh, size than this, so it's all up to you.
Uh, I think I will take this here. So we're going to let it soak it up. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but here the sides are curling. And then if you just wait a couple of seconds, now it's going back down. And there we have it transported on the paper. And this you see here, you can just uh, rinse that off. That is no problem at all. Let me do that. So now it's rinsed, and as you can see, the, uh, the color just stays on there. That's kind of nice. I like this. I like the bright pink. Now, a good thing to have handy is uh, all, uh, a lot of these strips of newspaper. Uh, I'm not going to do it because I want to take one more layer off, but this is what you clean your tray with. You just put it through like that. A couple of uh, these and the surface will be totally uh, clean. So I just want to do one more with a lot of pink and I'm going to do black. There's the pink. Maybe a lot of pink. There it is. Then the black. See if it still floats or spreads. Nope, no spreading. A little bit of Kodak Photo Flow, and there it goes. That's almost like veins, but there's a lot of black, so you won't see it as good as the first one I did. Okay, that's kind of nice. And I'd like to come back in with the uh, paints gray. I don't have enough of it, though. Before you uh, use the paint, you always have to shake those bottles. It's really important. I know a lot of people don't uh, remember or don't, you know, don't shake it. But that, that does separate, you know, the more fluid the stuff gets, the more it separates. I'm sure you've seen it with the acrylic ink that it separates like crazy. Wow, that is cool. This is going to be a wild one. <laughs> Look at that. That is really dark. I kind of like that. But I'm going to come back in with a with a little bit of pink. Oh, that is beautiful. A little bit of pink. When it stops spreading like you want to, just add a little bit more of that photo flow stuff. And it will spread like crazy again. This is really loading it up, but I just want to do that. Who cares? Let's have some fun. Oops, that was a little bit too much. That dripped off there. Wow, those are some crazy veins. I think I will come back in with the uh, clear this one just a little bit see what happens
Okay, that's it. I want to take this bit off here in the middle. There's one little bubble, but we won't. That's it. Coming right through. Pull it over the edge. And there we go. Big veins and these white ones are the uh, the clear that I put on top and the rest is all the uh, paint that I loaded up and it has some awesome awesome veins. I find this really um, I don't know it, it's really nice to look at. Maybe because it's um, you know so naturally flowing I think that's it. This looks like a tree. Look at that. See that? Looks like a tree branches with all sorts of stuff going on. That's cool. I just might use that. Cut that bit out. Okay, gotta put it away. So that was uh, sort of it. Um, I have a lot of paint left over, so I'm going to um, load it up one more time, and then I'm going to try and see if I can uh, do something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. That's a lot of pink. Okay, then back to the paints. And these are all, um, all Vallejo colors, for people who are wondering. Then I think I'll go in with some white, if it's going to spread, I'm not sure, nope. that one <clears throat> really tiny little dots it's kind of kind of cool maybe a little bit more spreading Okay, when I um when I put up this video, guys, I'm gonna be cleaning up, and the next one coming is the encaustic, because I really want to do that. Been looking forward to that like all week. This is nice. I I think the pattern is pretty. Oops, there goes my paper. Um, I'm gonna take out this bit here. This is so loaded up with paint that I can take it off straight away. And you can see the difference. The more paint you put on the surface, the uh, intenser it gets, more vibrant. And for this, you know, I'm glad I, I chose the uh, pink because it really shows up on the monitor. But as you can see, you know, this is just cute. You know, you could do like, I don't know, 20 or 30 in an hour and you'd have a lot of paper to, you know, just wrap little, little sweet little presents or something like that. You could cut it out for um, mixed media, for collages. Very easy to do. And um, yeah, you got so many things. If you have, a, if you do papier, uh, paper mache, um, I know that you can, tear pieces off and just you know stick it on those uh 
paper mache animals. That's also pretty. But you can do anything you, know, you like with them. You can make them into greetings cards and get well soon cards. Who knows? Okay, guys, <clears throat> this is it. I'm going to put up the uh, video and, um, oh no, I just want to do one more thing. Sorry. Um, because you know, when I, let's see if it, there's still, no, there's not. Because when I clean this up, that'll be it for a while with the marbling. And I'm still sort of, you know, <laughs> looking at it and thinking, well, that's cool. Okay. See how you can manipulate it with a straw too? It's kind of cool. Now I'm blowing way too fast, but you know, you can just make all the patterns you like. And that'll give a lot of variation and every single one is different, so you'll have a lot of fun with it. Now I'm going to put that in and pull it up. Pull everything off the surface and you never know what you get so that's kind of nice too this this piece you could frame that a little bit okay guys thanks for watching see you all in the next one where I'm gonna do encaustic so thank you all for watching love you all to pieces Lee boy shallow bye bye